Most screenwriters understand that they should know the ending of their story before they start writing. Can you explain how the same logic applies to understanding the business? Yeah, um, I, that's something I uh, had a challenge sort of defining for a while myself. And then um, I realized it's actually a lot simpler than I thought about it. It's just, it's, it's us. It's, it's, we call ourselves end users. We are people who actually pay for content. So if you have a Netflix subscription, you're an end user. If you pay for tickets to a movie, you're an end user. We are the actual audience that's paying money and funding the whole entertainment business. So looking at us, what do audiences like? How are we split into groups? What genres um, pop with certain demographics? That is what studios care about. That's what networks care about. That is what um, any sort of consumer, direct-to-consumer facing company will care about. Uh, so it's sort of the same idea. They are using that information to sort of delineate what content should we go for, what content should we avoid. So if you look at different television channels, they are all targeted to very sort of specific audience categories. They have similar genres. They have very similar themes. Um, and they tend to not, they tend to speak to very different groups and they don't have a whole lot of overlap. Um, I think this is probably the most visible with cable news where you see very polarized views of the world, um, uh, speaking to very specific audiences and all they care about is speaking to that one target and nobody else. Uh, if a company is releasing the Twilight films, they're doing the same thing. They really want to keep their audience happy so that they can make the second and the third film. If they're doing the Fast and Furious franchise, they really want to keep that audience happy so they can keep sort of churning out one title to the next. So, very long-winded way of answering this, but it's basically, you're, you're correct. If you're going to write a script, you have to know how it ends because you structure everything leading up to it. When we're doing distribution deals, when I'm sort of getting films financed, or getting television shows off the ground, we are thinking the exact same way, but our sort of, how are we gonna make this work? We're looking at an audience. We're looking at a company that speaks to that audience because most of what I do works in what we call like the B2B or business to business end of things. Um, I'm doing deals directly with the studios or I'm doing deals directly with um, other entities that are direct to consumer. So television channels or VOD platforms, et cetera. They care about their audience. They want content that's gonna keep their audience happy and engaged and watching. I need to give them content that's going to ensure that that takes place. So I'm absolutely using the metrics, the data, the information I can gather or that they can share with me about who their audience is, what they like, how they like content to feel, how they like it to be structured, how they like it to flow, and then I work backwards and those are the kinds of films we look for. Those are the kinds of screenplays we try to find. We try to find writers who can sort of deliver in that world. And that's sort of what keeps that supply chain going. What else do writers need to know about the traditional script to screen mode of thinking? Uh, I would reverse it. Um, it's, I, I think when you're starting out, it's, it's the, whatever is gonna get a couple scripts like under your belt, so to speak, like follow it. But um, once you sort of get a much better command of your craft, you have the confidence that you can write feature length scripts with relative ease. It's not easy at all, but I mean, the fact that you know you can do it. Once you sort of reach that point, you need to sort of stop thinking about the script to screen approach and start thinking about what do screens need and then write that because that's how our industry really operates. It's, it's if you look at the Cannes Film Festival or the Berlin Film Festival, a lot of people have a mindset that the film gets made and then you take it to the festival and then sort of present it to the world with the hope of getting distribution. And it's like, no, the distribution was set up before the film was even shot. That's a big marketing stunt. That's just getting it out there and showing people like, look how great this movie is. We want awards, et cetera. Um, maybe very small independent films go to the markets uh, and haven't yet secured distribution. But the big ones, they're already taken and they're locked. Um, and you sort of have to think about screenwriting the same way. You need to approach it as 
What do these television channels need? What do these outlets need? Um, what are the core genres that make that work? Uh, I've, I wrote about that years and years ago in, in my first book, and it was, those have not changed. Like cr Christmas movies, they make hundreds every single year. It's like Christmas is coming this year and I guarantee you it's gonna come next year too. And there's gonna be a big content need and a lot of networks and a lot of TV channels all over the world um, really bank on that. Action films with aging male heroes, you can shoot them very economically and you can get all kinds of known talent um, who can be in those films. You can shoot them for a day or two and you have this big celebrity you have on the poster. Uh, but those same scripts, they work at very low budget levels, but they also work at much bigger budget levels. The genre is what's important. I wouldn't do a horror film, but you could do a creature feature, something with some kind of a tangible visual thing and not just sort of the standard issue sort of slasher film. And then I'm, I'm personally a big fan of like tween girl romance films. Those do extraordinarily well, both as movies and as well as TV series. Uh, there's a lot of latitude in those genres you can work in. So those are the things that I think writers need to think about is these are the genres that are gonna sell. Um, I call them goldmine genres. That's not like an industry term, but it's uh, uh, those are the genres that sell. So if you're writing in those buckets, uh, you're writing what the industry depends on through good times, bad times, inflation, non-inflation periods, and uh, that's what the industry builds itself on. And forgive me, why not horror? Horror is just, horror and comedy are just really, really, really hard to pull off. I, I call these latitudes of failure, which again is not like an industry term, it's just something I made up, but it's, um, it's like, if you're gonna write something or shoot something, if you're gonna make a movie on spec, whatever it is, there are certain genres that like, you gotta nail it or it's just a dud. And a comedy or a horror film, if you have like, if it's 99% on point, but there's like one or two things in it that aren't ideal, uh, it just like loses interest or it loses market placement opportunities. Whereas if you have a family movie that's very family safe, uh, if you have a Christmas romance movie with a dog in it, or like, a tween girl and a horse movie, any of these that like aren't perfectly executed or there's like maybe not the best coverage of a scene, um, they still get bought and they still get picked up and you can shoot them on very low budgets and even if they don't come out perfectly like there's an audience for it because television networks and VOD platforms around the world love that stuff. They're advertiser safe. They're, um, they're very family co-viewing friendly. Uh, I mean, Christmas movies are a good example. I don't think many people actually watch them, but they're just like background fill and people like to have them on. And so there's not a whole lot of dedication to the viewership of them outside of a select group of people. So it's, um, but networks love them because they really turn in the ratings. So that's the kind of thinking you have to have is if you're going for a genre like comedy or horror, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying like, work on it, but maybe don't have it be your out of the gate project that you're trying to sort of get an agent with. There's always outliers, of course. There's always examples people can cite of like, well, this person did it and that person did it. It's like, yeah, they did, but the vast majority of people, that's not gonna be the path they follow.